Francis Crick was born on June 8, 1916 in Northampton, England, into a middle-class family. He began doing science experiments in his home when he was 10 years old. He graduated with a degree in physics from University of England. James Watson was born on April 6, 1928 in Chicago, and at the age of 15, he enrolled at Chicago University and majored in zoology. He later received a Ph.D. in genetics from Indiana University when he was 22 years old. In 1951, Watson joined Francis Crick at Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge, England. He was only 23 when he made his greatest discovery. In 1931, James Watson had this to say. When he was 30, Linus Pauling knew he was the world's best chemist. Ten years later, his peers agreed. By then, the nature of the chemical bond was already on its way to becoming the most influential chemistry book of the century. His biggest biological success came from his 1951 proposal of the alpha helical fold for protein molecules, which everybody else thought were too large and complex to study. Then, unexpectedly, he struck out when he proposed an implausible three-chain helix for DNA. Several months later, in Cambridge, England, Francis Crick and I, apprehensive that Linus might bat again, found the double helix. Why Linus failed to hit that home run, we'll never know. I must remember Pauling from 50 years ago, when he proclaimed that no vital forces, only chemical bonds, underlie life. Without that message, Crick and I might have never succeeded. At first, Watson and Crick had a problem. How do you bond the bases together? And how do you get them to go accordingly due to their sizes? Crick and Watson discovered that adenine and guanine were purines, having two carbine nitrogen rings in their structures. Thymine and cytosine were pyrimidines, having one carbon nitrogen ring in its structure. If the bases were paired up so that the purines and the pyrimidines were together, then it would look wobbly and crooked. Watson and Crick then found if they paired the thymine with adenine and the guanine with cytosine, DNA would look uniform. This pairing was also in conclusion with Chargoff's results and Chargoff's rule. They also found that a hydrogen bond could be formed between the two pairs of bases in all DNA strands if one side has a thymine base the other side should have adenine and the same with guanine and cytosine each side is a complement completing of the other Eureka through Chargoff's rule and known facts about ratios of bases in DNA Watson and Crick fully understood DNA's purpose with passing genes. And through Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin's work with X-ray crystallography, Watson and Crick were better able to understand and fully determine the shape of DNA. In 1953, on the morning of February 28th, they determined that the structure of DNA was a double helix polymer or a spiral of two DNA strands, each containing a long chain of monomer nucleotides wound around each other, a.k.a. the double helix. In 1962, Watson, Crick, and Maurice Wilkins received the Nobel Prize for their work, and Crick had this to say. DNA is a polymer. That is to say it has a regular, repeating backbone, with side groups called bases, projecting at regular intervals. However, all the bases are not the same. There are four kinds of them, and the genetic information is conveyed by the precise order of the different sorts of bases along the DNA. In other words, the genetic message is written in a language of four letters. Incidentally, the total length of the message for man is not short. It is probably more than a million letters long.